God wants to give you that thing because it's for generations to come. God doesn't want to just give you that thing for you, but he wants to give you that thing because there are many people tied to that thing. There are many destinies tied to that thing. It's not just about you. He gets the victory. Hi YouTube family, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys are blessed. So today I am here to share another word with you guys, to share something that has been literally bubbling up in my spirit these last few weeks. So a few weeks ago, I felt led to do a study on the story of Hannah and literally just so much was downloaded, so much was coming to me and even as I've kind of gone since that period, so much more has been coming. So over this weekend, we've had a conference at my church and literally the person that spoke at the conference was speaking about the exact same thing. So personally for me, I just said that, yeah, it's time to release this word. And I just pray that it will bless whoever it is meant to be for. But the title of the word is, it is time to give it to God. It's time to let go and give that thing to God. So I'm just going to start by kind of just giving a little bit of a background into Hannah's story. So where I was studying and it's mainly from 1 Samuel chapter 1. And then after that, I'm just going to go into a little bit in terms of what we can learn from her story in order to be able to let go of certain things and give it to God. Because God wants that thing and God wants to do something with that thing for but for so many of us, we don't want to let go and give it to God. So from the story of Hannah, we know, or people that may have read it will know that Hannah was seeking God for a child. Hannah had gone through years of literally not being able to give birth to a child, being barren, basically not being able to have a child for so many years. Now, for those who are watching this video, it might not necessarily be a child that you are seeking or asking God for. In the spirit... When it comes to a baby, this could be representing so many different things. It could be representing, I don't know, a career. It could represent your marriage. It could represent a ministry. It could represent so many things. And as I'm kind of going along with Hannah's story, I would definitely encourage you to just kind of see the things that you can relate to when it comes to the things that she was dealing with. So first Simon chapter one, we meet this woman named Hannah. And Hannah had basically been believing God for a child. It wasn't happening year after year after year and nothing was coming. On top of that, she had to deal with her husband's other wife, Penina, who basically was having children. So imagine she wasn't able to have a child, yet the woman who was essentially a rival was able to have children and was birthing, birthing, birthing more children time and time again. So after some time, Hannah basically got to a point where she went and she prayed to God and she basically started to ask God that, okay, she wants this child, she wants a son and that if God will give her this son, that she will give this son back to him. So I'm going to read that scripture real quick. First Simon chapter one, verse 11, it says, and she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for your entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. The interesting thing that I find about this story, guys, is that Hannah was looking for a son. But God was looking for a prophet over his people. And what many people don't understand, right? People that can kind of relate to the story of Hannah. So like I said, it might not be a physical child for you. Maybe for you, you've been praying to God, believing him for success in a certain area of your life. And you've not been seeing that success. You've not seen that thing you've been praying and asking God for. You are asking God for this thing. But what you don't understand is that if this word relates to you, obviously, God wants to use that thing for the advancement of his kingdom. God wants to use that thing for his people. God wants to use that thing for nations. And, you know, Hannah is not the first person that we kind of see with this kind of similar situation in terms of not being able to have a child. The same thing happens with Sarah. The th same thing happens with Rachel. The same thing happens with Samson's mother. We see the same as well with Elizabeth. But what we notice about all of these different people is that despite them going through that season of what was termed barrenness, being forgotten by God, being left behind, everyone going ahead of them, when they eventually birthed the thing that God had put inside of them, 
None of those children that they birthed were ordinary. None of those children that they birthed were just, okay, yeah, just normal here, then. No, all of them were used for the purposes of God. So, like I said, some of you guys are asking God for a certain thing and you're crying. You're like, why, God? Why is this not happening? Why are you not doing this for me? You've forgotten me. But you don't know that the reason why it's taking much longer than others is because God wants to use that thing for his purpose. He wants to use that thing for his glory. It's not just about you. It's more than you. It's bigger than you. It's generational, right? So going back to the story of Hannah, I think a few things that I kind of pick up from the story that I found really, really interesting is that number one, sometimes people might mock you while you're on that journey. So what we see with Hannah is that Penina, her husband's other wife, basically mocked her that look she's the one having a child she's able to have children yet Hannah wasn't able to give birth and sometimes that is what you might have to deal with while you are in that place of waiting for God to bring that thing to pass but not allowing that mocking to get to you is the only thing that you can do I remember I did a video before maybe like two years ago and I was talking about how sometimes we allow pressure to get to us and because of that pressure we then give into things that we shouldn't give into or even I can imagine Hannah probably kind of wanted a child just so she could shut the people up, <laughs> just so she can prove that she can have children, just so she will no longer be mocked. And that's how sometimes our motives even become wrong for wanting that thing because of those things that we've been facing. Another thing that I pick up as well is that not everyone will understand. Not everyone will understand your weight. Not everyone will understand you having to wait for that long period for God to do what he said he would do. Not everyone will understand when it looks like everyone is succeeding ahead of you, going ahead of you, and you look like you're behind. Not everyone will understand. Even Hannah's husband, Elkanah, did not understand. He was like, Hannah, I don't understand. Like, why are you upset? Like, you have me. Isn't that worth more than 10 sons to you? He just didn't understand. And again, that's sometimes what happens when we're in that waiting period. We're waiting for God to bring that thing to pass. And in the midst of what looks like barrenness and fruitlessness, sometimes people won't understand. Sometimes people will try to pressure you, try to tell you to give in to that thing, to do that thing, to go ahead of God. But we know from other stories in the Bible that if you do that, then you will just end up birthing an Ishmael. So what can we learn from Hannah's story in terms of giving that thing to God? Because I believe that is what God is saying for some people right now in terms of giving that thing to him. He's waiting for you. You know, sometimes we're waiting for God. Sometimes we think we're waiting for God and we're saying, God, you're not doing that thing. You're not bringing that thing. It wasn't until Hannah got to that moment, that point whereby she literally surrendered and she said, God, I will give you this son. Like, if you give me a son, I will give this son back to you and he will be yours for the entirety of his life. And for some of us, God is waiting for us to surrender and give that thing to him to say that, okay, God, I want this. I'm trying to think of an example. I don't know. But maybe you're saying, okay, I want this success. But God is saying, okay, I will give you this success, but I need you to give it to me so that it could be for my glory, right? Hannah went to God and she cried. And that kind of spoke to me in terms of how God cares about our tears. Even in the Bible, it says that God collects our tears in a bottle, right? So God cares about our tears. But one thing that I feel like this story teaches me is that, it wasn't Hannah's tears that made God give her the child. No, it was the moment of surrender. It was the moment where she gave God that thing that he was looking for. And like I said, she wanted a son. God wanted a prophet. They were able to partner together to bring that to pass. Both of them basically got what they wanted out of the situation. The same way for some people, God is just saying, give it to me. And that's when that thing that you are believing me for will come. Delay is not denial. So don't feel like you being in a season of what seems like barrenness, fruitlessness. Don't give up and don't be discouraged, right? Because there's so many scriptures that tell us that it's the barren one that will birth more than the one that was married, right? From the pattern of what we see from God's word, it's usually the one who had to wait long. You know, the Bible says that the last will be made first. It's usually the one that had to wait long, that there was a reason for that waiting. There was a process that you had to go through 
just so that what you are birthing will bring God glory. God doesn't want to just give you that thing. God wants to use that thing and bring glory out of it. God doesn't want to just give you that thing for you. God wants to give you that thing because it's for generations to come. God doesn't want to just give you that thing for you, but he wants to give you that thing because there are many people tied to that thing. There are many destinies tied to that thing. It's not just about you. And I feel like the quicker we understand that the quicker we realize that that is not just about us it's bigger than us then we will be more willing to say god i will give this to you and then towards the end of the story we see so beautifully written that it says god remembered hannah guys like i said like this is something that literally for the last two weeks has been brewing up in my spirit and then we were literally talking about this same thing at the conference I went to this weekend. And I just said, wow. And at the conference, I remember the speaker was literally saying that when it said that God remembered Hannah, it wasn't saying that he'd forgotten her. Right. So it wasn't like God just put Hannah on a shelf and said, OK, let me just forget about you. You are forgotten. No, 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 no. There was an appointed time. So for those people who this word is for. There is an appointed time. And when that appointed time is just like the Bible said, God remembered Hannah, God will remember you. But what God requires of you is for you to surrender and give that thing to him so that he can use it bigger than you can even think or imagine. It's so beautiful because the end of Hannah's story was beautiful from what we see, right? She didn't just have Samuel, this great prophet that was over the children of Israel to lead them, right? She also had more children. I believe it was three sons and two daughters, right? God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever think or imagine. And that is the God that we serve. That is the God of the Bible. That is Jehovah, right? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So I pray that this blesses somebody. I pray that this speaks to somebody. Um, and I'm just going to end with another point. So one me and one of my sisters that um, we were just coming back from the conference, literally, we were just talking and something else just came and I was like, wow, that is so deep. For some people, it might not even be a thing whereby you're asking God for something and you need to give it to him. For some people, they've actually created Ishmael's. They've actually birthed Ishmael's, which basically is representative of something that is not God's will. It's a representative of something that was birthed in the flesh and maybe you're discouraged and you feel like oh my gosh like it's all over like I, I can't do anything it's all over right it's not all over the beautiful thing is that we see from the story of Abraham that God can still birth the promise for you God can still birth those things that he wants to birth but it's going to also take you giving him your Ishmael are you willing to lay down your Ishmael and give it to God so that he can birth Isaac which is a promise through you and that's a question that only you can answer. But I pray that this video has blessed you. I pray that it has encouraged you. I pray that it has just shown you that God hasn't forgotten you. God cares about you. He loves you. And he hasn't just put you on a shelf. The waiting season is hard. It's not easy, right? But if God is in it and if God has said it, then he will surely do it. But then it's for you to partner with him and give him that thing so that he can use that thing, not just for you, but for the lives of others and for his glory. So thank you guys so much for listening to my little, I was going to say my little rant. It wasn't a rant. No, thank you for listening to this word that, yeah, has just been placed upon my heart. And I just pray that it will reach everyone that is meant to reach to, that it will bless everyone that is meant to bless and that you won't just end here. Like you won't just watch this video and then just go back to your normal everyday life but that you will take it to God and pray and just say God what things in my life have been Ishmael's what things have I birthed that I birthed in the flesh and outside of you and what things right now are you calling for me to give to you so that you can use it for your glory so God bless you guys I love you guys so much and yeah I look forward to coming back very soon by the grace of God to share another word peace out and God bless He gets a victory